Jon Stewart, and I am risen from COVID hell. First timer, first timer, did not care for it. Uh, I do also want to welcome in all of our viewers who are probably joining us from X after watching an amazing and surprisingly life-affirming conversation <laughs> between Donald Trump and Elon Musk. You know, when they started quoting their favorite Maya Angelou passages to each other, <laughs> my interpretation, the caged bird is singing for Bitcoin. <laughs> We do have a great show for you tonight. Mark Cuban is going to be joining us later. And, you know, uh, uh, we mentioned earlier, on this program, uh, uh, occasionally, we, we do make fun of uh, Donald Trump. Occasionally. <laughs> and with the ribbing and the joshing and the pulling the pants down and the <laughs> pointing. But... It, is in pain right now. Multiple sources tell The Washington Post Trump has grown increasingly upset about Harris's surging poll numbers. But Trump is, quote, complaining relentlessly. Posting multiple times on social media, clearly frustrated with Biden's decision to step aside, saying, quote, now we have to start all over again. <laughs> Not fair! <laughs> Jesus! A month ago, he was basically already the President. <laughs> he had cheated death, started a new ear accessory trend. <laughs> Back then, people thought his VP selection was a smart choice. <laughs> he had it all in the bag, and it was taken away. He was perfect on the beam. He nailed the dismount. He was walking to the podium to get his medal, and <laughs> Romania files an inquiry at the last minute. <laughs> right at the last minute. And they're just stealing it from him. And by the way, Romania, file all you want. You're not getting that medal back. <laughs> huh? You're not getting it back. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we have an inquiry. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> but now, instead of enjoying the fruit of six years of Biden attacks, Trump's got to start all over again. And the audience has to literally sit through him getting up to speed. There are numerous ways of saying her name. You can say Kamala. You can say Kamala. 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 Hey, Kamala. Trump misspelled Harris's first name as Kamabla. <laughs> I get Kamala. I get Kamala. Kamabla? Judges, are we taking Kamabla? <laughs> oh. Hope the Romanians don't have a problem with that. <laughs> but you know what? I, I guess what Trump calls her isn't as important as figuring out what she is. I don't know. Is she Indian or is she black? She, is she was Indian all the way, and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went, she became a black person. Just to be clear. What am I gonna do <laughs> with all my Indian ethnic slurs I was gonna use? <laughs> it mostly involved turmeric and cumin. <laughs> but she made a turn into black. <laughs> he talks about it like she wandered into the wrong neighborhood. Like, <laughs> she was driving on the Upper West Side and then boom, she's in Harlem. <laughs> boom. Would it turn? You know what, Donald? You're, you're clearly struggling. Let, let's get some issue-oriented ideas flowing here. You know what we're going to do? Come on, my brother. I'm going to help you out. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do... We're going to do some... <laughs> Apparently, I'm in a musical about gambling all of a sudden. All right, here we go. I got my pen, I got my pad, I got my visor. Forget the biographical stuff for now. Let's focus on the issues. I saw it yesterday on ABC, which they said, oh, the crowd was so big. And I've spoken to the biggest crowds. Nobody's spoken to crowds bigger than me. <laughs> OK.
Okay, okay. That's one of those mom and pop issues for the single issue crowd size voter. Uh, <laughs> I'd move on, but uh, oh, you've, you've got more? I had 107,000 people in New Jersey. You didn't report it. I'm so glad you asked. What did she have yesterday? 2,000 people? We had in Harrisburg 20, 25,000 people, and 20,000 people couldn't get in. We had so many. Nobody ever mentions that. When she gets 1,500 people, they said, oh, the crowd was so big. I have 10 times, 20 times, 30 times the crowd size. <laughs> I had an infinite crowd. <laughs> one guy, she had one guy named Jeff. <laughs> All right, it's very clear, you have everybody. She has nobody. <laughs> Can we move on? He wrote, has anyone noticed that Kamala cheated at the airport? There was nobody at the plane and she AI'd it and showed a massive crowd of so-called followers, but they didn't exist. He goes on to say she's a cheater, she had nobody waiting, and the crowd looked like 10,000 people. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, now, all right, for, for those of you at home who are saying like, oh, it sounds like he's losing his mind. <laughs> Just because there's video and photographic evidence that Kamala Harris's crowd was real doesn't mean that it was real. <laughs> and then you might say, oh, well, John, I was actually there. I was in the crowd. And have you considered you're not real? Have you considered that? <laughs> the point is this. Donald Trump doesn't need the fake news media and their AI crowd shots to win this thing. Because he's got inside information on Kamala Harris from someone she used to date. Well, I know Willie Brown very well. In fact, I went down in a helicopter with him. We thought maybe this is the end. We were in a helicopter <laughs> going to a certain location together. And there was an emergency landing. But he told me terrible things about her. in a helicopter with former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown, <laughs> who famously dated Kamala Harris. And while the helicopter was going down, <laughs> as you were plunging <laughs> to your imminent death, <laughs> former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown turns to you and says, this might not mean anything to you now, <laughs> but do you, do you remember that lady I was going out with? <laughs> the, the prosecutor, well, before we die, <laughs> I just want you to know She's the worst. <laughs> I do not want to meet my maker without giving you that piece of information. If you survive, you may need it. Oh, my God! <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm sure a moment like that was seared not only into the memory of Donald Trump, but also into the memory of former mayor Willie Brown. <laughs> To be clear, you have never been on a helicopter with Donald Trump. No, I have not. Are you kidding me? I just assumed that he was on a helicopter ride with somebody black and he made a mistake and thought it was me. What? What? That is so f***ed up! <laughs> that I'm sure that is not what happened. What are the chances Trump is just mixing up his black people? It seems that the African-American politician in question was not Kamala Harris's ex, former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown, but rather this man, Nate Holden, a former Los Angeles City Council member who says he had a bumpy ride with Trump in 1990. <laughs> oh, my God! 
means? Nate Holden, former Los Angeles City Council member, told Donald Trump as their helicopter was going down. <laughs> bad things about Kamala Harris that I guess Willie Brown had told him if they knew each other. <laughs> that is the only explanation, right? Holden saying, quote, Willie is the short black guy living in San Francisco. I'm a tall black guy living in Los Angeles. I guess we all look alike. Hey! Donald Trump is not racist. He just meets a lot of people on death helicopters. <laughs> and he needs some mnemonic device help. If the chopper goes down, that's not Willie Brown. <laughs> One. If the flight's not going great, you're probably riding with Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Look, people, they pulled the candidate Trump was crushing. It's hard. You think you could write a new hour in a month? It's not easy. <laughs> He's trying. He's trying out some good catastrophizing on Harris. If Harris wins this election, you will quickly have a crash like in 1929. We could end up in World War III. The suburbs will be overrun. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Stock market crash. World War III. Suburbs destroyed. It's fresh. It's new. We haven't heard. What was that? I'm sorry. If Biden got in, you'll have a stock market crash. The likes of 1929 or worse. A very real risk of World War III. They're going to in my opinion, destroy suburbia. <laughs> this is just a remix? <laughs> Dude, you can't just find and replace Biden with Kamala. That's lazy apocalypsing. Look, man, if you want us to genuinely fear your opponent as the existential threat you'd like to make them out to be, you're going to have to do better than boilerplate, cut-and-paste shit. You're better than this, Donald. Joe Biden is a failed president. She was a failed vice president. The worst president in the history. The worst vice president in history. He is incompetent. She's incompetent. Everything he's touched has been bad. Everything she's touched has turned to bad things. She can't talk. She can't talk. In many ways, he's worse than Bernie. She's worse than Bernie. Low IQ. He's a low IQ individual. She happens to be really a low IQ individual. She really does. She has a very low IQ. This is bullshit, man. This is like when Elton John changed like three words and then pretended Candle in the Wind was always about Diana. It wasn't! <laughs> Very disrespectful to Marilyn. <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> the problem. Even when Trump does figure out how to come at Kamala, it's not really landing, because most of the time, the bad stuff he's saying about her applies even more to him. If Kamala will lie to you so brazenly about Joe Biden's mental incapacity, then she will lie to you about anything. She can never, ever be trusted. Yes, Donald Trump is telling America not to elect a liar. <laughs> Donald Trump is saying that. I mean, for God's sakes, he's like the Michael Jordan of lying. <laughs> or as Trump would say it, the Willie Brown of lying. <laughs> it confused me. Look, I hate to say it. I don't think Trump has got it in him to go after Kamala Harris. He's been fighting Joe Biden for six years. It's all he knows. <laughs> he misses the fight so much. <laughs> he was still workshopping nicknames for Joe Biden. This weekend. What do you like better? It doesn't matter anymore, but what do you like better? Crooked Joe or Sleepy Joe? Sleepy Joe, Crooked Joe. <laughs> this is sad. <laughs> it's like seeing an old man talking to an empty spot on the bench. <laughs> and then you realize, that's where his wife used to sit. <laughs> he would give her everything. For just one more moment, we cook it, Joe. 
I hear he's going to make a comeback at the Democrat convention. He's going to walk into the room and he's going to say, I want my presidency back. I want another chance to debate Trump. I want another chance. He's not coming back. <laughs> he's not coming back, Donald. Hey, you know how I know he's not coming back? We have a f camera on him. That's him. <laughs> He's just sitting there at the beach having an Arnold Palmer. You can hear him sighing over the waves. <laughs> Does this look like a man marshalling his forces to take back the nomination or filming a Corona commercial? <laughs> He's finding his beach. It's over. There's only one way. That Donald? <laughs> Meet me at camera one. <laughs> Hello, friend. <laughs> May I call you Donald? I get it. You wanted to run against Joe Biden. Just two old dudes going toe-to-toe -to -toe fungus. Last hurrah, Rocky 12. It's not fair. Now you've got to run against someone who appears healthy <laughs> and youthful and happy. Her vigor standing as a stark counterpoint to whatever <laughs> front butt thing you have going on. <laughs> and it's pretty clear that Biden isn't going to do what needs to be done to stop this steal. But, but someone I know Love stopping steals, <laughs> right? <laughs> Feeling me? Kamala Harris accepts the nomination next Thursday night, which means it may be time to get the gang together. Storm the convention! Pull in August 22nd! <laughs> this time, on behalf of Joe Biden! <laughs> you need is thousands of supporters who have not yet been sent to jail yet for being part of the last mob or got sent to jail so early in the process they're already out <laughs> if only there was a sign of the righteousness of this cause a federal judge ruling the Department of Justice must return the spear and fur helmet belonging to QAnon shaman Jacob Chansley shaman <laughs> Don thy fur helmet, we ride on for Biden.